Uh, so, very nice to meet you here. And um, this is the first time for me uh, to do a talk on um, on package design in Poland, of course. So that should should be interesting for you. Oh. I'm not sure if this works correctly. Right? <laughs> a lot of um, uninteresting sound from my my voice, but all right. So um, my talk is um, called Principles of Package Design, and uh, the subtitle would be How to Create Cohesive, Stable Packages. Um, in case you didn't notice, my name is Matthias Nobuck. I work as a CTO for iBuildings, which is a Dutch web application development company. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure about the sound. I think it's it's not it's yeah okay. <laughs> so it's sort of disturbing all the the extra noise. Um, anyway, let's just get started. Um, a little bit of motivation before I I get into the um, the actual contents of my talk. Uh, you may know me from writing about uh, PHP and Symfony on my blog, and I have been interested in the Symfony framework for a very long time, and I've been trying to find out all kinds of things about it. And so, at some point, uh, I got all these articles, and I thought there is somewhere hidden in all this content uh, a book on Symfony. I thought that that, sh that that it should be published at some point in time, and this book was called A Year with Symfony. Uh, well, you can still get it, of course. Um, but what's interesting in, in terms of motivation, my personal motivation, would be that uh, the last chapter of this book is about reusability. And I noticed that far too many people write code just for uh, one particular framework, like the Symfony framework or, for example, the Zen framework. And this is completely unnecessary. So it, it's, 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 it's totally possible to write code that can be used in all kinds of applications, regardless of the framework that you have chosen. Um, it turns out that, um, well, look who's talking. In fact, I personally used to be very tightly coupled to this framework. And um, of course, everything I did, I did with the Symfony framework. So there was a time that I was trying to get um, into code reuse as a subject, as an interesting subject. And I was trying to make my code independent of the framework that I, that I used. So if this is of interest to you, Maybe uh, you should get uh, to my next talk. It'll be in the other room. Uh, I think it's GT, G2 something. Um, and this will be a talk about hexagonal architecture in which I will explain everything to you about decoupling your code from the framework. And well, if you, do, if you don't have the chance to be there, uh, sort of the too long didn't read summary would be that there is a time and place for everything, including framework specific code. So let's take a look at the big picture of what we are actually doing as, as we are developers. Um, well, the lines in the left uh, top part of this picture, those are the actual statements that you write in your code. And in fact, those are the things that are really important for the computer at all uh, to be able to execute your program. But what's the most interesting part about our job is not writing the lines of code, it's about grouping them or arranging them in uh, useful units. And first of all, we arrange these statements into functions. And then we put those functions in classes, of course. And then at some point, we group these classes into logical units of um, things which we might call packages or modules. Um, so in this image, the colored boxes are the classes and we group them into packages and we try to find a way to to combine them into packages and that is what this talk is about how to group these things into packages um, when we are writing this code and we are creating these classes we have lots of good ideas about how to do this and people are always uh, very much interested in ways to uh, group their code into classes or uh, maybe design their for example domain model in a very good way uh, we have all kinds of ideas about how to do this. So we have uh, encapsulation, like we hide implementation details. We have abstraction. We, find to, we tend to find uh, higher level concepts to represent uh, something that is, that is basically lower level in a more generic way. Uh, we have composition, where we take objects and let them um, uh, or hide them in other objects. We have inheritance, where we have classes extending other classes, etc. Uh, and then, of course, we have the solid principles, 
which allow you to uh, write your classes in such ways that, the way that they behave well, um, meaning that they can be easily changed. Like the, most of the time, it's more about uh, uh, making change easy. And of course, we have design patterns for classes, which help us to recognize recurring patterns uh, in our solutions and also to, to find easier solutions for the same recurring problems. Hmm. But for package design, there isn't really such a thing. So all these design options that you have for classes, they are just aren't available for packages at all. Uh, and it turns out that we just copy the behavior of other package maintainers, other package developers, and just, just do what they do, right? Um, so how many of you have uh, published any open source package, for example? Right? That's good. That's good. Uh, and how many of you have published uh, a closed source package for just for your company in some way? Ah, that's, I think, I think that's, that's more, more than open source. Um, right. The thing is, this is just one part of the package landscape. We, we don't really know what a package is in PHP. It's, it's really complicated. Um, so a package can be open sourced or closed source, of course. So open source, well, th then you just put it on GitHub, right? Uh, closed source can be anything. But it may or may not have strict boundaries as well. Maybe it's not even clear that this package is a package because the code is still all over the place, but there is some organizing principle behind that code that makes, makes it a package. Uh, some packages are designed for single use within one application, and they can still be labeled as a package. But on the other, other hand, some packages are uh, strictly designed for reuse, so you have written the code with reuse in mind. Then maybe a package is just a single namespace, right? Or it can be a group of namespaces, or one main namespace with several uh, deeper-lying namespaces behind it. A package doesn't really have to have a composer JSON file. You can also just label a package as a package without it being able to be um, loaded or included in your project by Composer itself. So this is all very, very difficult to, uh, to understand about packages. What is a package, right? Um, still, we have all these, these very powerful tools that are centered or circling around the idea of a package. And hmm, these are very powerful tools, very useful tools, and I'm, I'm sure you all know about Composer and packages. Uh, but we definitely need some guidance in this area. When we are creating packages, we need some advice. It turns out, after a long uh, search on the internet, that there are something like package design principles. And this is something that I found on the website by uh, Robert Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. Uh, he also wrote the book Clean Code. Who knows Clean Code as a book? Ah, that's great. So, very nice. Um, so, of course, that's interesting material as well. But then the package design principles, they don't get that much of attention uh, compared to the class design principles. It turns out to be that these principles, these six principles, six, six principles <laughs> are very valuable. And uh, I think that everybody should know about this. So about a year ago, I started uh, sort of preaching these principles. Um, and now I, I reached Poland with it, so that's great. Um, <coughs> These design principles, they apply to every kind of package, whether they be uh, open or closed source, uh, whether they are uh, real packages in terms of composer packages, or they are, uh, well, uh, package definition-less packages. It doesn't really matter. Um, I also wrote this book after I did the research. Um, I think that, uh, well, this th I, I, I couldn't find any other book that, that discussed these package design principles uh, uh, in such great width, so um, I try to, um, uh, to to put it in a book. I have a copy with me. If you like to look at it, or maybe just uh, see if it's interesting to you, then uh, just 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 talk to me. Um, the questions that I answer in this book is basically what constitutes a good package. How do you compare good packages with bad packages? And well, what are these principles of package design? Of course, uh, but most importantly, how can you optimize the experience for uh, package users as well as maintainers, and it turns out that every of these, every one of these package design principles, will make for a better experience for both users and uh, maintainers of a package. 
So the first set of principles of these, these package design principles, there are three of them. They are about cohesion. And I'm sure uh, cohesion is somewhat familiar to you. Um, cohesion is about what belongs together and what doesn't. Uh, and of course, by which rules. So if one of your colleagues uh, comes to you and says, well, this class, it doesn't belong there. Or maybe he tells you that uh, this method, it does two different things. Th those things don't belong together. That's about cohesion. And you have to worry about, uh, does this code belong in this place, or should it be somewhere else? And we can group the code in many different ways. So we can group the things together that are uh, about the same kind of thing, or they are the same kind of thing. They may be working on the same functionality. Maybe they are uh, from the same vendor, like they are related to Symfony or Doctrine. Um, the, 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 the thing that we don't want is uh, something called accidental cohesion. So we, d we don't want to put everything in one place and, or in several places, but by no rules. And as you can see, by looking at the image, these are just, well, these are packages, right? And as you can see, there is a red package and a blue package there. And then there is a red piece of code in the blue package. Well, there is a cohesion issue there. So in fact, the red part, of course, should be in the red package as well. And uh, the green packages on the left bottom, uh, you can see that these are separate packages, but they might as well have been one package because they are all about the same functionality. And then the orange one, I, I'm not really sure. I think it, it tries to do too many things at the same time. So maybe it should be split. Maybe it should be more generic. Mm. That's, that's up to you, up to your imagination, really. Then there are three other design principles, which are about package coupling. And coupling is about uh, not what's inside a package, but what is needed by other packages. So it's about relation of one package with its environment. Uh, does the green package need some other packages? Yes, it needs the orange package, and it needs the red package. But it turns out, for example, in this image, that there is a circle in the dependency. So uh, the green one needs the orange one, and the orange one needs the green one. Uh, so that there, there is something wrong there, and this is not allowed. Um, I'm saying packages as a dependencies, but this can also be uh, like language extensions. In PHP, you have these PHP extensions, uh, or maybe even specific language versions, which are definitely dependencies of the package. But first, that's the first part. Um, let's get to the cohesion principles. A cohesion is about one package and what's what should be inside that package and what should be outside the package. So we look at the package in isolation, and then we ask ourselves, uh, what does belong inside? What, what, should be, what should be outside of it? Well, the first principle is called the release, <coughs> reuse, equivalence principle. So they are all like very smart, smart uh, uh, names for the principles. Uh, the granule of reuse is the granule of release. Mm, right, so that needs some explanation, of course. Uh, this means that you can reuse as much code as you can possibly release. And the unit of reuse, whatever you can reuse, is a package. So this, this principle is all about making sure that your package is a product and it can be properly used uh, outside of your project in another project. And this means that you have to make it a good product or else people will come back to you complaining about that package. Uh, so if you're talking about the PHP package world, then this is all about uh, at least having proper version control and making it available for other people to, to use. Uh, but maybe you're going to do this in a public way, or maybe you're going to do this in a private way. Something you have to think about. Uh, you have to write a proper composer package definition with every information in it that is needed to, to be able to work with it. Then you need some meta files, like the readme file, explaining what you can do with a package. You need a license, uh, explaining uh, well in which ways the package can be used without getting into trouble. You have to make sure that every resource in the package can be uh, used whenever the package is already loaded in the project. Um, you, you shouldn't require the user to do anything special before they can use it. Um, of course, and I think one of the most important things, you have to apply proper versioning. So you have to make it easy for people to use particular versions or version ranges from your package. 
And then this comes with a lot of branching and tagging and of course uh, a very um, a conscious way of, of writing your code. So you have to be aware that any change you can make to their code uh, has some rippling effect to the users of your package. Um, and finally, you have to have quality control, of course. So you have to make sure that the code in your package works and that it keeps working for every change that you introduce. I think backwards compatibility is a very hard thing for coding, uh, as well as uh, trying to prepare your code for reuse at all. And this is where um, the rule of three comes from. Uh, you can find this on codinghorror.com. That's a nice blog to follow as well. Um, there are two rules of three in software reuse. It is three times as difficult to build reusable components as single-use components. And a reusable component should be tried out in three different applications before it will be sufficiently general to accept into a reuse library. So when it comes to point A, I'm not really sure if this is true. I think if you apply the solid principles and any uh, object-oriented, well, uh, best practice in design, then um, this, this number isn't three. So uh, I think maybe two, right? So it, it's more about uh, trying to make your code behave in a generic way and make it completely adaptable to the situation of your user. Um, when it comes to B, I'm not really sure if this is true as well. So you can publish this online or your package, you can put it on GitHub and you just wait for the feedback to come in. And when people use the, your package, they will have some ideas about how to make it reusable or generic uh, that you didn't think of. So, well, you could also just try it out, right? And that's where I, maybe I sort of changed my opinion. Um, I used to say this. If you don't have the time to turn your reusable code into a proper package, then don't release that code. Uh, don't put it on GitHub if it's just a trouble to work with. Well, it depends. You can also be very explicit to your audience about it. You can just say, well, I put this on GitHub, this is my code, this is maybe an experiment. Um, maybe a warning, like I didn't test this properly or it shouldn't be used in production. And then maybe at some point somebody recognizes the relevance of this package and they invest the time to make it a better package. So, yeah, I, I sort of changed my opinion on that. On that. Um, then the second principle, it's called the common reuse principle. I think this is very important uh, for many packages out there because it's still being violated often. So violating, violating and violations that always sounds very, very harsh or problematic um, it's just, I'm just saying that this principle hasn't been honored that often. Uh, classes that are used together are packaged together. This is the rule. Uh, and this also means that if you use one class of a package, you will use all of its classes too. Hmm. Right. I'm not sure if this is true for many packages out there, because usually, one, uh, usually you take a package uh, and you just use one or two classes and then there are so many other classes in the package that you didn't use. So in, in that case, this principle has been violated. Uh, and the rule says we, you, you, you shouldn't just put classes in a package uh, if they can be used separately. If you see a use case for some of the classes in the package, then uh, move them outside and make sure that you can use that particular use case or um, support that particular use case. One of the package smells that help you recognize uh, whether something is wrong with the common reuse principle in a package is uh, something like this. So we have the blue package. It has orange classes, green classes, and red classes in it. And uh, well, I call these things feature strata. Um, so since I invented this word myself, uh, I can now tell you what it means. Uh, these are columns of features in this package. So each of the features, the orange classes together uh, form one feature. And you can use this feature in isolation. So you can just use that part of the package and completely disregard the other parts of the package. And there are some really nice examples. Uh, for example, the sec Symphony security component itself. Um, I must say that this has been fixed in the meantime. So uh, it's not a pro problem anymore, but it's a nice example. The security component used to contain things related to uh, ACL, like access control, uh, well, some core classes, uh, CSRF. Uh, and, well, HTTP related security classes. And then it turns out that not everybody needs all of that functionality. Maybe you need the CSRF classes 
uh, but don't do anything with um, like the firewall protection from Symfony. Um, so then you have to split the package, which, as I said, has been done already. So, so why is it important to split these functionalities into different packages? It's not really about the extra files that you have to have on your hard disk. I mean, that's just that's just not not that that many files or that many uh, bytes. Um, well, it's 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 really about two things. If you force users to have this security component um, uh, in its entirety in your project, then you make all of the classes inside the package available to your project. And maybe some team members start using classes from other parts of the package, and then, well, things will become messy. It will become unclear uh, whether or not this is a conscious decision. Also, and I think more importantly, uh, people, people have to keep track of updates, especially when it comes to a security package like this. Uh, you have to be sure that you have the most recent version of your code. But if a package is very big, it will be updated regularly, but there will be changes in other parts of the package that are completely irrelevant to you. At the same time, a big package is likely to break at some point or to, to make uh, backwards incompatible changes. Uh, and so, well, you, you tend to um, uh, avoid updating this package and to, to delay that, 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 that point where you have to fetch a new version because it may or may not be relevant to you. And this will be a lot of work. So if you can just take this particular piece of the package that is relevant to you, you can always keep updating it. Uh, and you have a lot, lot, lot of things less to worry about. Another smell about uh, packages can be that uh, there are classes with different dependencies in it. So in this case, the green class needs uh, another package, the green package, to be able to work uh, successfully. And as you can see, there is also an orange class which needs another an orange package as a dependency to be loaded. If you only use the green class, then you only need the green package. If you only use the orange one, you only need the orange package. And if you need both, you have to load both dependencies as well. Um, there are so many examples of this problem out, out there. Uh, for example, in the GoFred package. Uh, who's, you, who's worked with GoFred? Mm, some, some people, yeah. Um, so this package allows you to uh, uh, treat the file system as something that's abstract. So you want to put files somewhere, uh, but you don't know where they will be saved. Like on the actual hard drive, or maybe uh, somewhere in the cloud, or using FTP, for example. Um, so Packages like GoFred, they come with all kinds of adapters. And each of the adapter needs uh, another dependency to be able to work with it. Um, so looking at the composer definition, you can see that this package, the GoFred package, suggests a lot of different packages to work with, or some PHP extensions as well. Um, so it's really hard to find out um, which other dependencies I should install in my project, right? Um, which version is allowed for, for any of these dependencies. And the, the biggest problem here is that uh, your, your project now needs to have extra dependencies, which are ne really not your project dependencies. They are, in fact, dependencies of GoFred itself. GoFred needs these dependencies to work correctly. So this is really sort of, well, hiding the fact that there are real required dependencies, um, and instead, well, saying we have just suggested ones. But none of the code, or m much of the code from this project, uh, wouldn't work without any of the extensions or uh, other dependencies. So uh, how to solve this problem? In fact, for every adapter that you have in this package, you should have a separate package, which has um, this particular dependency as a real dependency. And then there would be the core package, which just uh, supplies some generic code for file system abstraction. Uh, the funny thing is that the, um, the maintainer of this package uh, basically agrees with me on this, um, but it turns out that it's, it's, of course, a lot of work to create all these packages uh, and to find maintainers for this. Um, it's also true at the same time that um, uh, another uh, file system abstraction package called Fly System, who's worked with Fly System, you know this? Mm, some people. Um, File system or fly system does somewhat of the same thing as GoFred does, uh, but the maintainer he has actually split all the packages in separate adapter packages. So and he's very happy about this because now the dependencies are absolutely clear, and uh, he has full control about which dependency versions are allowed. So 
Uh, that basically makes sure that the common reuse principle has been followed and not violated. So looking at the, uh, the third principle, classes that change together are packaged together. Uh, this is called the common closure principle. Um, there are many things, many ways in which a package is is um, <coughs> is endangered by things outside. So, uh, for example, a Pac-Man, scissors, and fire. Uh, there are all kinds of things that endanger the consistency of a package. Uh, something changes on the outside, and then the contents of the package has to change as well. But whenever something changes on the world outside, you want to limit the number of changes that has to be inside your package too. You also want to limit the number of packages that you have to change, because every package has to be consciously released again. Um, you can think about maybe some of the applications features change, or the business rules with regard to a particular part of your project changes. Um, maybe the web frameworks best practices change, that's something, or configuration changes. You don't want to be forced to open up every package in your project and, and just start updating the package. You don't want to release, republish, or anything like that again and again for many packages at the same time. So one smell that the common closure principle has been violated would be that several, uh, uh, or that, that code from several layers in your application has been combined. For example, uh, the web interface of your application the code for that shouldn't be combined with the code for the command line interface. Um, and your domain code, your, your model code, it shouldn't be in the same package as the web user interface code. Uh, in particular because the web uh, layer or the web uh, package would be depending on something like uh, uh, the model package. Um, <coughs> and the same really goes for every, any kind of uh, other infrastructural service. Um, again, uh, if you're interested in this kind of layering of code and separating things, then, um, uh, well, uh, I encourage you to come to listen to my other talk on 11 o'clock, at 11 o'clock on hexagonal architecture. Um, the good thing is, if you have this, these things in packages, then you can switch them out at any time you like. So you can completely re replace the user interface for the web um, and create a, a completely new one. That's really great. Um, the second part of the package design principles, they are about coupling. And this is about looking at the relation between packages. Not what's inside the package and does it belong there, but how are packages, uh, well, talking to each other, depending on each other. And each of the arrows, of course, uh, stands for a uh, dependency from one package to another. So in this example, the green package needs a class from the orange package to work correctly. And what's very important to keep in mind is that we shouldn't consider the whole package ecosystem. Like we should only look at the package in one project. So that's something to keep in mind, especially because I think many, many people uh, confuse this. They, they try to um, analyze the whole package uh, or all, every package on packages and say something meaningful, meaningful about that. And that's, a, that's sort of a problem. So um, <coughs> this is a, a dependency graph. You can see packages linking to each other. And the first of the coupling principles tells us that, um, well, a dependency graph of packages must have no cycles. In this case, we have a cycle. The blue package depends on the green one. The green one depends on the orange one. And the orange one depends on the blue one. So that's indirectly sort of a cycle. Um, it turns out that Composer itself is able to resolve uh, cyclic dependencies in most cases. Uh, sometimes it takes some extra work. Um, but the problem is really with the development workflow. If you are releasing these packages, you can never be sure at the, that, that they all work at the same time together. So this is like a big bang release going on there. Uh, because, well, if you want to release a new version of, ver of, package, of the blue package, you first have to release a new version of the green package to be able to make sure that it works correctly, which needs a release of the orange package. And that one needs a release of the blue package first. So there's, it's, it's, it's impossible to find the first package to release. It just has to be all released in once, uh, in one single step. Um, so looking through the, the issue queue of um, uh, Composer itself, uh, I found this, this guy uh, who I accidentally know personally. Uh, and he, he reported this problem that Composer wouldn't be able to find out the, the circular dependency. 
And, um, well, it can be solved, as I said, with Composer, but um, it's always better to find a way to uh, refactor this dependency. Uh, and it's, it's usually very easy to... So if two packages depend on each other, maybe indirectly, you just need a third package which contains the thing that they depend upon, and then you have, of, of course, you have just um, uh, externalized the dependency. Um, and sometimes it's just it's just not really relevant to keep the packages separate. So sometimes it's possible to merge these package, uh, and then the dependency relation is within the same package, and that's no problem at all. This this happens all the time. So that's one way to solve the problem. And when it comes to um, the last uh, two um, uh, design principles with regard to uh, coupling then uh, the concept of stability becomes very important. And stability, uh, something is stable if it's resistant to change. And that's something that is very interesting to, to note. Um, it's also applicable to many other kinds of things in the world. So uh, a stable person, uh, he is unlikely to be influenced by any external force like, like, uh, like children or uh, maybe a partner trying to convince him to do something else. No. Stable means I am, I am not influenced by external forces. Uh, the same for a stable building. Of course, a stable building, it's unlikely to collapse, right? And so a stable package is more or less the same thing. It's unlikely to be modified because of external changes. Now, it turns out then that what makes a package stable is not something inherent about the package itself. Uh, it's about its relationship with other packages. So it's a coupling issue. So let's take a look at some uh, packages and the way that they are coupled to each other. So in this case, uh, we call this package an irresponsible package. So there are no other packages depending on this one. Uh, and this means that it doesn't need to behave responsibly. It doesn't have to be the same forever. Uh, it can just change any part of itself at any time because no one is dependent on it. So there's no reason to, to be the same over time. It can be easily changed whenever you like. And then this is a dependent package. So this orange package needs a lot of other packages, like the gray packages, to work correctly. Um, if a package has many dependencies, then uh, any change in any of the other dependencies is likely to cause a change in the orange package. So it's likely to change or in fact break because of a change in other packages. So these two combined in one diagram, uh, this, this, this orange package, it's both irresponsible, it doesn't need to be the same over time because there are no packages depending on it, and at the same time it's very dependent, so it needs a lot of packages to work correctly. Um, and this means that together, irresponsible and dependent means it's a very unstable package, it's very likely to, to change. Now. On the other end, we have a very responsible package. So looking at this orange package, it has lots of incoming uh, dependency relations. So many packages depend on this orange one. Uh, and this means that it has some obligation to stay the same over time. So it's not likely to change because it is to be responsible. Um, the outgoing directions uh, for this package, the outgoing dependency arrows, uh, well, there are no, there are no errors, uh, arrows outgoing. So this package has no dependencies, meaning it's basically independent, right? So none of the code in this package is uh, sensitive to any change outside of the package. There's no way that another package can force it to change. That's something to keep in mind, because now if we look at the entire diagram, we can see that a stable package uh, consists of a package that is both, both responsible, lots of packages depending on it, and it's also at the same time uh, independent. So there's, there are no, no dependencies and there is uh, no reason to change at all, uh, meaning that this, is an unlikely, uh, that this package is very unlikely to change. Uh, and we call this package, of course, a highly stable package. Now, the stable dependencies principle tells us that we have to depend in the direction of stability. So we can have all kinds of different packages in our project, like very irresponsible, very dependent packages, uh, meaning very unstable. 
But then we also have to have uh, more responsible independence packages, meaning they will be very stable. Uh, you can calculate stability or instability for a, a given package by counting the uh, dependency arrows. And then you have to make sure that uh, if you draw the diagram with all the, uh, all the arrows to the packages and you put the most irresponsible packages on the top and the most responsible packages to the bottom, then uh, you only have to have arrows pointing downward and never upward. Um, so this, this diagram goes from completely irresponsible and dependent to packages that are responsible and independent. And we have to depend in the direction of stability. Uh, a counterexample would, would be something like this. So we have the red packages, the irresponsible, dependent, uh, meaning uh, instable packages, uh, and they all need this, this green package, which is responsible. It's also quite independent because it has only one other dependency. But then comes the orange package, which is uh, quite irresponsible. Uh, well, at least it, there, there is one package depending on it, but that's not, not too many. But at the same time, it's, it's highly dependent. It needs a lot of other packages to work correctly. So this, this thing is actually quite instable. Uh, it's likely to change at any point in time. Um, and that's a bad thing, because any of the changes uh, might be a, a breaking change, a backwards, compatible, uh, a backwards incompatible change. And any of those changes is likely to have a ripple, rippling effect uh, on the other packages. So this, this is a, a wrong situation. And we have to find a way to sort of um, uh, invert that dependency direction. Now, the last of the principles uh, is called the stable abstraction principles. And it's all about what is more likely to change. And as I said, uh, uh, an, an irresponsible package, uh, which is also a dependent package, is likely to change. But then, well, what is more likely to change? Um, oh. Is it something that is concrete or something that is abstract? Who knows? The concrete thing is likely to change, yes. Um, because it contains details about the world, uh, where a particular file is, uh, how many connections it should have, or I don't know. Uh, that, is, that is concrete. And something abstract is very generic, and it's likely to stay the same for a longer period of time. It doesn't contain any of the details. Um, so we could ask the same about what is more likely to, to change, a class or an interface? Who knows? A class, right. Because it's the class that contains the implementation details. The interface is the abstract part of it, and it's likely to be the same over a longer period of time. Now, um, where should I put things that are not likely to change? In which kind of package? A stable package. Right, so <coughs> this design principle tells us that we should, should depend uh, in the direction of abstractness as well. So we should find stable packages to, to depend upon, but these stable packages are stable because they are also not likely to change because they have a high number of interfaces in it. So these are the implementation packages, they contain lots of classes, and they depend on the interfaces because, well, they implement the interfaces, which means they depend on it. Um, and the idea is that a package uh, should be as abstract as it is stable. So looking at the diagram of, of instability to st stability, then the same would go for uh, the amount of interfaces um, in comparison with the amount of classes in a package. At the bottom, you will find very stable, uh, very abstract uh, packages with lots of interfaces. And at the top, you will find very irresponsible, very dependent, uh, which means very instable classes, which contains the most classes. So either of these packages are quite OK. And each of the projects needs both of these types of packages uh, to work correctly. Because, well, change is going to happen, and you have to uh, supply that, uh, that option. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind. You also need the more stable packages. Um, who knows a good example of uh, an open source uh, abstract, like an interface package? You know something about this? Yes, PSR3 is a very good example. Uh, the, the related package for this contains the logger interface, 
right? And this package is a very stable package because many other packages will depend on it. Uh, it also has no dependencies. Well, it doesn't need anything else except itself. Um, and at the same time, it contains uh, an interface, which is an abstract thing. So it's th that's a good package if it's in your project. Um, and there are, of course, many other initiatives for this to, to find interface packages. Like, for example, Laravel has introduced uh, an interface package. But the problem with Laravel, uh, it's called the, the contract packages, uh, the contracts package. The problem there is that it contains interfaces for every part of the application. So although it may sound like a good idea, well, in fact, all of these packages should be split up again uh, to make sure that it doesn't violate the common reuse principle. OK. So let's take a look at, at what we have uh, discussed so far. We know uh, about the reuse release equivalence principle. That was the first one. And it tells us that we should only reuse code that you can release as a product. Right? So you have to take care of this, releasing it as a product, uh, making sure that the experience of reusing the package is a good one. Then the common reuse principle. Uh, all code in a package is reused at the same time. If you take one class from a package and can use it separately, or well, are, if you're likely to use it separately, then it has to be in a separate package as well. You don't want, people to, or you don't want to force people to, use, uh, to load lots of code into the project which they don't, don't need. Common closure principle, code in a package only ch changes for a few reasons. So you have to find a, a way to, to put the code in a package that is likely to change for the same reason. And if you find different reasons for a change in the code, make sure that the code is in a separate package. Uh, acyclic cyclic dependencies, no cycles in the dependency graph. I think it's less relevant for PHP itself, but it is important for package management and for the release cycle. Um, <coughs> stable dependencies principle says only depend on more stable packages. If you're going down in the dependency diagram, you will find more stable packages. If you're going up, you will find more unstable packages. And stable abstractions principle, more stable packages are also more abstract. And less stable packages are also more concrete. Um, one word of advice at the end, uh, you cannot maximize all of these principles at the same time. There are just different packages in the world. Some of them are irresponsible, some of them are responsible, some of them are dependent, some of, some of them are independent. You can't have all of this at the same time. Uh, so it's just a matter of keeping these things in mind and making sure that you have a nice um, landscape of packages in the end, uh, looking good. You know, one package is like this, one other one is like that, uh, but they are not all the same, uh, or they aren't all the same, uh, or all in the same way designed. Uh, in the end, it turns out that if you apply all of these principles, you will have very small uh, packages with just uh, very uh, clear, well-defined uh, tasks f uh, for them. Uh, you won't have any confusing optional or suggested dependencies anymore. The dependency graph is really clear. It's all about required dependencies, and people will not be confused about which versions to use. And you will, in the end, end up with more stable uh, packages, which you don't have to change that often. So change will be uh, limited to a very small number of packages, namely the instable packages at the top of your uh, project. OK, so um, uh, for this occasion, I have created a uh, discount for you. Uh, if you'd like to buy the book, uh, you can get it on LeanPub. Um, the slides are already available on JoinedIn, uh, also please leave me some feedback there. And uh, if you go to this slide, you will, f you will find that link. Uh, if you follow it, uh, there is, I, uh, I think, a 20% discount currently. So um, you can also buy it in a paper version. I have a copy with me, so uh, come to me if you want to see it. And, um, but unfortunately, I cannot give you a discount there. It's just, that's Amazon. That's just one big machine, which I can't influence. Um, if you have some questions, we still have a couple of minutes before I have to go to the other room. Um, you can also talk to me on Twitter. Uh, and uh, well, uh, just like I said, please leave me some feedback on uh, joined in if you like. And uh, well, if we can see if there are questions. Okay. Uh, we have you. You told about uh, don't uh, avoid join uh, uh, layers in the package uh, mm -hmm. application layer in and something. Uh, 
We had in another project uh, packages which contains component and a Symfony bundle. Uh, we decided to do it because uh, it took time to release uh, the whole. Mm -hmm. Because if we will divide it into two, uh, we had two uh, times code review, two times releasing and mm -hmm. tagging. Uh, do yes. you think it is okay or we should uh, divide it? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, so uh, that it turns out that in practice it, it does take some extra time to release it again and to create packages for everything. Um, uh, as with everything, <laughs> it's it's just it, it matters. It depends or um, sorry, it depends on your situation, of course. Um, if you're going to uh, reuse that, that code in other projects, you want to uh, remove the dependency on Symfony uh, things like like um, for the bundle. Um, because otherwise you would force people to use to load that dependency as well or you will get some very confusing dependency uh, diagram um, so uh, I think it, 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 it depends on uh, um, on the reuse of the code really yeah. uh, okay does it answer your question yeah. good thanks Anyone else? No. Okay. Then thank you very much. Thank you.